Hello there. I'm going to talk about Burma and their horrible treatment of the Muslims that live there. It's truly awful. I wish it wasn't happening. Um, the Burmese clearly don't like the Muslims. The, the the Christians and the Hindus that there seem to to they seem to work live together. There's something about Muslims that that, that generally around the world don't get on too well with other people there. They're not very really tolerant of other faiths. Um, that doesn't that doesn't make this okay. What's happening to them? It's awful. I wish it wasn't happening. Just want to make that clear. All right. The population of, of Burma is 51 million. Um, 89 percent is Buddhist, 6.3 Christian, 2.3 Muslim, 0.5 Hindu. There were it was up 3.9, just under 4 percent Muslim, but they they have been leaving in large numbers over the decades. There are just over a million Muslims that live in Ring Rong Rohingya. Sorry for my pronunciation, and they're not listed in this census. This last one. Um, not sure exactly why, but I believe that they don't consider this region to be proper proper Burma. It's more sort of a border area between Bangladesh and Burma. Anyway, they're being forced out across the border. It's horrible. Um, the media loves this. So there's been a BAFTA award last night for a documentary a film made about this. I'm sure that will go on to do very well in other awards and Oscars and stuff, what, stuff like that. Or if it hasn't already, I don't know. Maybe it's already done it. Um, media loves it. They love to go on about how horrible everybody is to Muslims and we need to be nice to them. And they also keep telling us about the Holocaust. And the Holocaust is truly awful. Six million Jews were killed. And Hitler was trying to take them all out, the final solution. We know that. It's awful. I think what they're missing is some other key bits of information about Islam and why how it's got to where it is. So I urge you to check out Bill Warner. He's done brilliant videos and he also does books on this stuff. Um, and I watched one again this morning that I've seen, uh, the 400 years before the Crusades. So uh, Islam was just in Saudi Arabia. It's a big place, but that's just where it was. And it then started its very, very violent and bloody jihad. For 400 years there were 548 battles which saw many Europeans slaughtered and about a million taken as slaves. The female slaves were sex slaves and the males I believe if it's if it's the same as what happened to the African slaves got the full Islamic castration which is cock and balls off and if you survive that which the numbers were very low or who survived that you were then sent on the front line to, to wage war. So no, don't ever let anyone tell you that the only slavery that's ever gone in the world is by those evil white Europeans, Americans. That was truly awful, that slavery, by the way, as well. All slavery is awful. We can all agree, I'm sure. Anyway, so the media loves this stuff. Uh, but what they're, what they're really missing out is, that in light of also this last weekend, 12 foiled, uh, the, the MI5 boss has come out and said that there were 12 foiled terror attacks. Uh, in the last year in the UK. There's obviously the attack in Paris this weekend and two attacks in Indonesia. Um, it, it's jihad season. Eat, sleep, jihad, repeat. And there's going to be more. And there's going to be more. And the media is going to continually downplay that and push this narrative about these Burmese Muslims suffering so that we, we feel guilty somehow. And the Holocaust is to make us feel guilty somehow. And I believe if you look at the 1995 Barcelona Declaration, it's a very, very valid document. It talks about this and the media and the, the governments all agree to be very, very nice about Islam. Anyway, so we, we can see that Islam has not necessarily been that nice. And also the other, the other group that seems to be getting off lightly by the press, this is a bit strange, is socialism, Marxism, communism, whatever you want to call it. And I've done a top 10 worst dictators in history. Okay, so we could have a little theme tune for this, but I haven't got it. Uh, number 10, Yakuba, Yakubu Goen from Nigeria. I'm not sure whether he uh, has an ideology, where, where it's based. I'm thinking it might be Marxist, but I don't know. Okay, he's responsible for the death of 1.1 million. Number 9, Mengista, Mengistu, sorry, Ethiopia, communist. 1.5 million deaths. 
Number eight, Kim Il Sung, North Korea. I'm pretty sure that's Marxist. 1.6 million, uh, plus however many more have died through the gulag, uh, through his his son and grandsons, uh, a grandson who's now Kim Jong Un. Number seven, Pol Pot, Cambodia, communist, 1.7 million. Number six, Ismail Enver, Pasha, Ottoman Empire, that's Islamic, 2.5 million, including the 1.2 Armenians that were slaughtered for kicks in the First World War. Hideji Tojo, Japan, I don't think we can attribute Islam or um, Marxism to that. That's just all of his own back. Leopold II, Belgium, 2 to 15 million. It's really vague how they could be so out on that one but that's not Islamic uh, you know or anything like that Hitler uh, killed 17 million 6 million of those were Jews through the Holocaust he was Nazi the worst people has ever been obviously number two Stalin just 23 million um, I've heard that listed as much more on other sites but I, I want to be fair to this site so that's 23 that was communism uh, number one, Mao, 49 to 78 million. And again, as communists, that's China. I've heard that accredited for more than 100 million. Um, it's difficult to know, isn't it? But from that list, we've got Hol Holocaust is responsible for 6 million. Nazis, sorry, responsible for 6 million slaughtered Jews. And Marxism, over 100 million people died in, in the name of Marxism. Since 9-11, um, there's been an average of about 29 people killed in the name of Islam every day. Um, the three, if they'd have done that, so if they'd have done the maths a day earlier, obviously that would be much higher. Um, there's but 28,000 been killed since 9/11. It would obviously you'd have to add another 3,000 to that or whatever it was. But uh, if you're a David Icke fan like me, you may be <laughs> questioning that a little bit. Um, here's a quote about this is about Islam again clash of civilizations 1993 in Eurasia the great historic fault lines between civilizations are once more aflame this is particularly true along the boundaries of the crescent shaped Islamic bloc of nations from the bulge of Africa to Central Asia violence also occurs between Muslims um, on one hand against then Orthodox Serbs in the Balkans Jews in Israel Hindus in India Buddhists in Burma Catholics in the Philippines Islam has bloody borders. So really where, where I'm getting to here is that the media seems to completely brush over um, how many people have died because of Marxism and how many people are continuing to be slaughtered in the name of Islam. And that, like I said, that's the 1995 Barcelona Declaration and I would wish they need to start to drop this this, whatever this agreement is to show respect to Islam and to never be negative about it because if we can't address the problem this knowledge is freely available we all know it when you watch the stuff on the media when you watch when you go online and look at news reports when you scroll and you, re you read the, the, the points of view at the bottom no one's buying this shit media and that's why so many more people are getting their information from YouTube from alt media you know I mean, I, that's where I'm getting this stuff from. And some people are getting this stuff from me. Sorry about that, because it's not very, it's probably not accurate. Anyway, um, rambling as usual. Nice to be back from my little holiday. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.